Welcome to another edition of Resilient Living Podcast, a show dedicated to improving quality of life for both people and planet through liberation and independence, moving you from surviving to thriving and living on your own terms. Today is episode 14, and it is Smart Preps for Supply Chain Shortages. And excuse the background noise, that's my pickup truck, it's my mobile studio. I usually do these podcasts when I'm on my work commute. Uh, but let's get into it. I want to talk about food, gas, energy, lights, things. First of all, I'm not one of those crazy preppers out there, you know, that's building bunkers and going bonkers for bunkers, you know, things like that. But I do have a, a sense of things that are, it just seems like common sense, things that we're going to use anyways, uh, things that's going to make our life better regardless. We're not wasting, we're not, especially the, uh, the bad philosophy or bad practices that you see people go and buy a bunch of food that they don't even eat, it expires and they end up giving it away. You're losing money. You're not running your life like a business. Uh, and you sure as heck, you're not, you're not preparing yourself correctly to be efficient. So what do I mean by efficiency? We're going to talk about food here. Is that we want to buy stuff that we like, stuff that we're going to eat. And we're going to keep these things in rotation, right? We're already going to buy these things. We're already eating them. Why not stock up extra? Run your life like a business, more necessarily like a restaurant. What do restaurants do? They'll buy uh, two ketchup, bo- five ketchup bottles, right? Or, or let's just say a five-gallon bucket of ketchup. Uh, as soon as they pull, they have two, they usually keep two in rotation, right? I'm just making stuff up here. Well, as soon as they pull the first the five gallon off and go fill all their stuff up, they pull the next one out. And then that goes into, uh, uh, that lets them know, we need to go buy five gallons of ketchup. They always have ketchup. You can't run a uh, burger restaurant without ketchup, right? So they ne- they always know that they're never going to run out. They keep this in supply, but they put the new in the rear and the old in the front. But first of all, we need to talk about what you like to eat. And uh, what, and beyond what you like to eat, what about your kids or your significant other? You need to get like a food journal and you need to figure out and make a list of all these kind of things and say, huh, so if we are going to stock up, let's make sure that we stock up and buy some stuff that everybody likes, not just what you like. And let's not leave out the goldfish, you know, Fifi, the dog, the cat, uh, whatever animals you have. Maybe you might want to consider buying some extra things uh, beyond food too, like bedding, like a uh, um, what are they called? The wood shavings and things like that for your pet hamster. Or, you know, get yourself a couple extra things in case we ever did have a shortage and everybody's good. But now that we know what, what everybody likes and you've done that food journal, let's talk about what different types of food here. We have dry foods we're going to start with. I like to keep uh, jasmine rice. I've got probably about 20 pounds, I think, or maybe 30. I can't remember. But we eat this stuff regularly. I love cooking Thai food and stuff uh, in a pinch. Uh, we use, uh, uh, you know, if it ever the crap ever hit the fan, we got plenty of uh, jasmine rice there. Uh, the other things I got is like quinoa. Uh, I got a lot of grains, oatmeal and stuff like that. These are things that you're you're already using, and um, you can do multiple things with them. What I love diversity, like oatmeal, you can make a meatloaf. Uh, you can do all kinds of different stuff. Um, so the other kind of dry foods that I'm already using is my. Uh, plant-based uh, protein powders. So I got like chocolate, vanilla, and stuff like that. I also have peanut powder. It's a protein protein mix. Uh, those things don't really spoil. You can keep them for many, many years. In a pinch, you can mix them with water, or you can just straight up eat the powder if you want to make like a pudding out of them. I make my protein smoothies for my meal preps every week, so I just keep these things in rotation. I, I love to buy when they're on sale, and I'll stock up on them. I must have probably about Oh, I'd say five gallons of, of uh, each of, of pro- protein powder of chocolate and vanilla, you know, and I just keep them in rotation. I haven't really bought any in a long time, uh, but a lot of different things there you can use as far as dry foods. I like to have cut, like nuts and stuff like that, dried fruits, uh, you know, it's a good one too, like some jerky. Uh, jerky keeps for a very long time. It's a lot better than that army food too. I don't know if you guys ever tasted that army food. It is, it's bad. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I can't even. But uh, yeah, moving it forward on canned foods. And um, you know, if a people are eating paleo, everybody has different diets, keto, paleo, uh, vegetarian, you know, vegan and all this different stuff. There's, there's a lot of different things that you can uh, keep for yourself. If you are uh, paleo, one good one is ghee. Uh, ghee is like, it's, it's a, uh, I forgot what type of butter. It's basically cooked down uh, it's where it doesn't need refrigeration and it'll last up to six months once you pop the top open. 
I like to get grass-fed organic to make sure it doesn't have any, you know, pesticides and herbicides and stuff in it. But that's a really good fattening kind of thing. Something you can just take a teaspoon of too and put in some hot water and get you some calories, you know, in a bad situation. But um, now it's just one of those things. I think if you're in a, a if you are paleo, you can go with canned tuna, canned chicken. They actually have smoked dried salami in these packages. You have summer sausage or summer whatever. I think it's summer sausages. Look at the expiration date. Those things will last like three years, I think, or something. Um, I've eaten those before where you just chop them all up and uh, uh, cook them like bacon with eggs. They're really greasy, but it's got this really smoky, salty flavor, so you can throw a little bit of potatoes and stuff with it. You know, it's not quite my favorite, but uh, if you're eating paleo, that's probably a good deal for you. Now, if you're eating uh, vegetables, let's talk about uh, frozen foods. If you're a vegan, they got, in my opinion, they, they, they'll let like carrots and broccoli and cauliflower and things like that ripen to their full potential because they want to sell you something that's going to taste good, right? So they have raw, frozen, flash frozen vegetables. Now, when you buy vegetables from the store that aren't flash frozen, they have to pick them green and they have to do something to them. I don't know if they're irradiating the food or what, but if they picked it right when it was at its perfection, uh, and it gets to, by the time it gets to the grocery store, it's probably most likely going to rot. So... Uh, in my opinion, some of these frozen vegetables are really good. They got uh, autumn like stir fries and stuff like that, bell peppers, mushrooms, carrots, and all kinds of sweet potatoes, things that you're going to use anyways, which is nice to stick in your pressure cooker or your air fryer. Um, one cool thing with, that I've done is uh, air frying uh, raw cauliflower and using the uh, um, any kind of like dipping sauces. I just made mixed some cheese with uh, milk. And they put some like garlic powder and herbs and stuff in there and made like a cheesy dip for my daughters to actually eat the air fried uh, uh, cauliflower. I put a little bit of mayo around the outside and some paprika and things like that. It was basically like vegan, um, even though I'm not vegan, but it was like vegan uh, 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 chicken wings. So that was kind of cool. Uh, let's move forward now from food. Let's go to gas. Um, you know, there's been that, that weird hack that happened in the, in the gas line, the gas supply there up, up in uh, back east in the United States here. And I didn't really freak out about it, you know, uh, but there are some people saying that there could be some gas shortages. But it's multiple reasons. We've had in the 70s where they had gas lines, people waiting to get gas. Uh, for me, I didn't realize, like, man, even if I was sitting home, I'm completely prepped out. I'm good. You know, in fact, I look and I'm like, if it happened, it would be like a vacation. I would just hang out and eat food and mix some drinks and stuff like that and uh, just wait it out. We're perfect. But I have a garden and I don't own the land and it's probably a good 15 minute drive from where I'm at. So what if we're out of gas and I need to go check on my garden? Uh, very nice. Also, if we wanted to run some, uh, a generator, we'd need some gas. So what we're going to do is just like the restaurant style is we're going to fill up our gas tanks and... Uh, we're going to get, uh, I'm not like the crazy preppers who have like like 50 gallons of gas. I've got like 20, I think i got like 30. I've got like, what is it, uh, six gas cans, six times five, 30. Yeah, I have 30 gallons. I have 30 gallons of regular old gas and I have 30 gallons of, uh, of diesel, which my truck runs off of. So that way I can go, you know, what if there was a gas line and I wasn't prepared or I needed something? I go and get, uh, I got to drive down to the uh, um pharmacy or I got to drive down to get my groceries uh, you know what I got some gas there and if there's any left over uh, around if I get in the gas house I can pick up some more so yeah and we're going to keep these things in rotation so basically what we're going to do is we're going to mark these things um, when I think of it now it's like this is basically the principle mark it January and you'll know that in July uh, after six months you're going to want to dump that into your car put it in the back seat or the back of your truck and go fill it up and then put it back and you're going to every month you're going to dump one two February goes for uh, uh, August, right? I kind of like the idea of just writing these all out in advance, just August, and July, and all, so you know the exact month when to dump them, uh, so that they don't, you know, they says they don't go bad. So you keep these in rotation, and you'll never run out. And we're going to talk about why you might want to need some stuff like this. So um, let's move on from gas. Let's go to water. Now I know a lot of people use uh, bottled waters, and I really wish that people would. I understand if you if you need to and all that kind of stuff, but you know, plastic water bottles are ending up in the landfills, and it's just a horrible mess. And they could run out. What if uh, you know? What if they the supply chain got disrupted and you didn't have no bottled water no more, and you had no way to filter your water? So that's why you should get yourself a gravity-fed filtration system. Now I don't have one that I could recommend to you. You guys can look. Look at a bunch. I, I like the charcoal filters. 
Uh, the one I've got, you can literally dump water in there and put red food dye and it'll come out crystal clear. So these things, you can literally fill up out of a pond or a river. You can dump water in there and it'll literally fill it up and it's completely drinkable. They got 99.9% .9 success rate of getting rid of Giardia and all those kind of bacterial funguses and things that can mess with your body. And, and you guys can just keep, you're producing perpetual water. I mean, these things don't need to be changed out, but every six months. A uh, tip I'll leave you guys is I have these actually rock minerals that are taken from uh, the ocean floor or something somewhere. I can't remember. Uh, but they're supposed to remineralize your water. When you filter out water, sometimes, you know, with reverse osmosis and things like that, water is magnetic. And literally, these things pull a lot of the uh, minerals out of your water. So it's good to introduce the minerals at the tail end of your filtration systems. Uh, I prefer stainless steel, too, not the plastic. You know, you'll have that stainless steel one for the rest of your life. Uh, let's talk about propane here. Uh, propane, what I like in contrast to wood is it doesn't rot. You can leave it in a tank for years and years, and to my knowledge, and it's not going to go bad. It has multiple functions. Uh, I prefer the big, large tanks myself, but you know, you're going to use these anyways for your barbecue and things like that. But what other uses do they have besides, you know, have a Memorial Day barbecue? Uh, they're good for, but basically good for cooking. You know, we we know that you can hook up your uh, gas uh, barbecue if you got a stove top or something like that. And you can cook all that rice and all that food that we told you to prep for. But another thing is good for is heating for your house. Now they have these things called catalytic safety uh, heaters. And they run off propane and they will not kill you. You can put this thing right in your bedroom with you or in your tiny house, your trailer, whatever you have. And it will keep you warm uh, and in a pinch. And you can actually use these things when you go camping. Some of them you could put in tents. I wouldn't recommend it though because if you knock it over it will catch your tent on fire. Uh, but they do have some some models. I believe that you can use in tents. So think about the catalytic safety heaters Lighting is not a big one, but I do have those little lanterns. You know I have the little socks on the bottom I keep those things just in case you know, you never know if the power went out for days But if I ever go camping, you know, and my something happens with my solar panels, which hardly ever does uh, You know, I got to change a diaper my, my special needs daughter. I got to change her diaper or things like that I've got the light and uh, yeah, if I want to stay up late, you know and I get some ambiance and stuff. I'll turn on those lights when we're camping. But I've got an emergency situation too. Um, so yeah, for lights, let's move on to generators. Now there's generators that run off of propane as well. I'll bet you a lot of you guys didn't know that. They're dual fuel. Now in my research, I've never owned one, but I did a lot of research and I found out that they're not very efficient use running off propane. Uh, the reason why I think that they would be a good investment is that if you did have 30 gallons of gas like I do and you ended up running out and something bad happened, you can always resort to running them off uh, uh, propane. You know, if you got yourself those flash frozen uh, um, vegetables and you got them in a uh, um, freezer and the power does go out, it would be really, really nice to know that you can hook up this propane generator and at least keep your food from going bad. So definitely something to take into consideration. Uh, my last one here is first aid. I think uh, there's there's not particular, I know I'm probably missing a whole bunch of these, but I'm only allotted 15 minutes here. That's all my bandwidth will allow me um, because of all the other uh, uh, shows and stuff that I do. But my next one, just to make it quickly, is first aid. And peroxide, I noticed, uh, hydrogen peroxide was uh, not very common during the uh, pandemic. And I use it for, um, for household cleaners, for disinfectant. I use that with vodka and white, distilled white vinegar, uh, lemon oil. And that's what I clean my toilets with, my sinks and everything. And I like the spray bottles in case you ever had a, a bad wound. I've been wounded before on construction sites. And instead of pouring and it dripping down your arm, I got the spray bottle, which is nice. And you can just spritz where you need it and just kind of wipe it down. And I think those things, you know, an emergency uh, situation, if the doctors or whatever, I mean, even if you go home after the doctors stitch you up and things like that, uh, you're not going to use atom bomb biotics, as I call them, that kills everything in your body. You want to just spritz yourself and clean stuff up. Uh, it's a really good idea. It has multiple uses. You can dye your hair, you know, uh, use it as a cleaner. So get yourself some peroxide. Things like aspirins, uh, neosporin, I think is a good one. You know, put them in your car. It never hurts. You can help other people. I, for one, am on blood pressure medication. So uh, what you can do, I didn't do this. I just happened to buy an extra bottle. I've got a 100-day supply. So I have like, like three months supply of uh, medications. What you could do if you needed to is lie to your doctor and say that uh, you don't have a, uh, that you lost your medications and that you need another refill and get yourself a hundred. If your doctor won't do it, get another doctor, man.
All right, if you are uh, if you need an inhaler like my daughter does, good thing to get some extra ones. Pack one in my truck. I've got one in my home. I even have an, an auxiliary one uh, in my storage unit con compartment just in case. So things like that. Get that thought. I hope that I helped get you guys in the mind frame today of, uh, of thinking this way. This is not, you know, freaking out in the bunker or anything like that. It's just things that make common sense, things that we, we can use anyways, things we can buy on sale and actually save money or buy in bulk. And it can really make your life uh, a lot easier and a lot less stressful. And I'd like to say, uh, as I mentioned, I'm already all prepped out with all this stuff. So really the, the tension level and stress level just goes down. I hope I'll never have to use them. But it, knowing that I have it there makes my life, life a lot easier and a lot more pleasant. So guys, that's the show. Thank you for being here. You guys can look in the description below. It's resilientlpodcast at gmail.com. You guys can... Um, uh, send me a message. Let me know how I'm doing for you guys. Let me know what you guys want to hear. And if I get brought you guys any value, please like, subscribe, uh, and uh, give me a review. Help this show get started off the ground. And guys, just in general, thank you for being here. So as I always say, go out there and have yourself a near-life experience. Don't lose your muchness. Carry on the fire and humid up, my friends.